Anjungaseo. Today I have like we have with us uh, Palak from our first batch of uh, certificate course in Korean, and uh, we will talk about uh, Palak's language Korean language learning journey. So Palak, she Anjungaseo. Anjungaseo is one thing name. Nay, she got a nice wish for some come some nita. Thank you for your time. So we will start with like your brief intro, and then we will proceed. So nay, can you just introduce yourself briefly? Uh, Chonan Palakieyo. I am Palak. Uh, I live in Delhi, and I studied with Satish sir in the level one of the Korean certificate course to learn Korean in India. And I'm here to talk about my journey today. Okay. So, 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 uh, Palakshi, what are you doing? Like, uh, what is your field right now? You are studying, working, or? Yes, sir. I'm studying. I'm a master's student of international relations. I study in Delhi itself. Yeah. Okay, that's great. Okay, so so how did you get interested in Korea uh, or Korean language? When was uh, it? Hmm. When so you got I, interested in this thing? Hmm. Um, before I before I joined college, I was working as a journalist. And okay. I had to write a lot about India-China relations and uh, mm -hmm. about North Korea and South Korea relations. So mm -hmm. I got very interested in the Korean Peninsula in general. Okay. And uh, while reading about that, I got to know mm -hmm. about Korean popular culture as well. I got into BTS. I started watching mm -hmm. Korean dramas. Okay. So very organically and naturally, I developed an interest in Korean language as well. I see, I see, I see. So, what was your motive behind learning the language? Like, 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 it was just to understand maybe lyrics or to understand Korean culture more or Korean people, society, or anything. Like, was there any specific purpose, or it was just like uh, spontaneous that okay, let's learn this. Uh, so, purpose was mainly, of course. I mean, it will definitely help if I get to. Uh, understand li song lyrics and drama mm. dialogues because Definitely. I'm very interested in these things. Mm -hmm. But the main purpose to take in intensive study of the language mm -hmm. was to understand Korean culture better because eventually I want to specialize in East Asia when it comes to international yes. relations. Mm -hmm. So it will be useful for higher study as well and uh, general reading news about the region. Uh, getting to know about the perspective from inside the country because international media writes only in English. Exactly. But to get an insider's perspective from Korea, it's important mm -hmm. to read news in Korean as well. Mm, that's that's very interesting actually. Like because I think uh, in China, if we talk about foreign countries, China is the most important country in Korea because like they are the biggest trade partners of uh, Korea. So yeah, if you are studying about East Asia, I think if you have like a, a knowledge of Korean language and maybe, yeah, if you know a, more, a lot about China, that's a good combination, I think. Hmm. That's very interesting. Okay, so 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 how has your language learning like been so far? When did you started uh, learning Korean and how? Like, did you do some self-learning yourself or self-study or something? So before I joined the course, I mm -hmm. already knew Hangul and mm -hmm. I knew the script of Korean. I knew Hangul. Mm -hmm. Besides that, I knew a few basic phrases which I picked up from maybe watching dramas or uh, nice. YouTube videos. So mm -hmm. I knew some basic phrases and I knew mm -hmm. Hangul. Mm -hmm. Except that I was completely new to the language when I joined the course. Okay. So, so like, did you find any, like, where you were struggling at some point, like when you were studying yourself, uh, like did a point come where you felt like you know, now I'm, it's, it's been like becoming very challenging for me to like do it on my, uh, on my own or like you just felt like, okay, let's uh, learn it like thoroughly in a systematic way. I have learned this far, but now let's do it systematic way. Or was it because of some, some barrier that you came across? So I, on my own, I never took up um, studying Korean, like I never took up studying grammar patterns or uh, how to frame sentences on my own. Mm -hmm. I was okay. very insistent that uh, I want to go in a structured way and do it mm -hmm. with an instructor. So mm -hmm. it was def uh, from the starting itself, the plan was to eventually join okay. a Korean course. Okay, okay, okay. 
Okay, got it. So, 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 so uh, how, how is it like so far? Like you have finished level one. So, uh, do you think uh, that like so far, whatever you expect, whenever we start learning a language, we have some expectation that the, the, how difficult can it be or how easy can it be? So, uh, like, how has your experience been? Did you find Korean as easy or as difficult as you expected, or has it been like easier or more difficult? than you anticipated actually uh, in some cases in some mm -hmm. aspects of the language learning process it has been easier than i expected and in some cases it has been harder for mm -hmm. example uh, i thought the grammar will be very difficult turns out that it is not my yes. native my native tongue is hindi and mm -hmm. the grammar of hindi and korean is so similar and the the sentence formation the structure of korean is so concise there is no extra yes. word there is no and it's so contextual that mm. you don't have to use so many words as like your intonation conveys right. a lot the situation conveys so much so learning grammar i thought would be very challenging but i find it easier mm -hmm. something i do find that i do find challenging is memorizing vocabulary because the words in korean are completely different from english uh, right. say for i have done european languages earlier mm -hmm. i uh, speak an intermediate level of spanish okay and when you learn european languages which a lot of people in india do already yes the uh, the words are similar to english in a lot yes. of cases so even the script is similar in many situations script is similar so it's easy to learn words vocabulary there but grammar is difficult but yes. in korean grammar is easy and i find vocabulary a little difficult vocabulary is difficult i also find vocabulary a little bit difficult because there are so many like uh, words which are pronounced in a very similar fashion and like when you are hearing a word uh, when you are not seeing how it is written you can't differentiate between the sounds like sometimes like ch ch like aspirated ones and yeah and like the pachims so whether it is like uh, if you're writing for example kiri so whether the r is coming in the bottom and then it is e vowel or it is ki and ri so so these things make like memorizing the words properly very very difficult and like because korean is a very rich language and sometimes people feel like uh, when we talk about hindi we feel like hindi is also like it has a very rich vocabulary but hindi is not as rich as korean language sanskrit definitely is sanskrit tamil if you, these languages are very very rich much richer than uh, korean because these are very old languages but hindi if you see the, the hindi that we speak right now that's not very old that's like maybe 100 years old 120 years old that's it before that be, people used a different type of hindi it was a mix of like avadhi and braj and all those languages so the current vocabulary in hindi is like if you read the poetry or literature from 50 years back most of the hindi speakers will not be able to comprehend the the words i cannot comprehend yeah <laughs> i can also cannot understand like if i uh, read the poetry of like mathilesha and gupta and all these things i can't understand because our hindi vocabulary is very very poor actually in fact uh korean if you see it's like a thousand years old language so definitely the vocabulary the richness of the vocabulary is really uh, you know amazing they have like different types of word to express the same feeling and as a teacher also i find it very very difficult sometimes the students will come up with like very similar uh, the words with similar meaning and they will ask like why this why not this and it's it becomes uh, difficult so definitely yeah vocabulary is uh, uh, any, any other thing that you find uh, like found uh, very very difficult much difficult than you than you expected apart from vocabulary uh, yes sir, there was one more thing mm -hmm. uh for, um when uh, i have an interest in learning languages mm -hmm. but i had never learned a language with a different script like something that you have exactly. to start mm -hmm. from the a b c d of that language exactly. i had not done that before mm -hmm. so i was apprehensive what will happen will i Uh, be able to read the script but turns out learning hangul is easy i did yes. it on my own i did it on my own 
but when you actually go to read say mm-hmm. to practice i have followed a lot of news outlets in korean mm-hmm. on twitter or pages on instagram which write in korean Mm-hmm. so when you read there is a mental block because your brain and your eyes are not used to the script mm-hmm. so the first instinct is to just skip it and not right. actually read so it you don't want to re- you know put pressure yeah. on your brain to, to just put go pressure. through reading that thing yeah like in english or like because we are so used to the script that like we can just read with our eyes it it seems like we are not even using our brains we are just like going through the words and like automatically like it's passing on from so easy, our eyes like to the brain reading yeah. subtitles while exactly. watching something it's yeah. so easy some your brain is occupied in watching the images and your eyes are automatically reading what's written because we're so used to english but that does not happen with korean and when yes. you're reading hangul so i really had to train my brain to not skip and actually spend some time to read the mm-hmm. thing so yes. yeah and then having a different sk- script definitely makes the process a bit lengthier yes it, it takes time actually the thing is that like we are used to reading one page in let's say 5 minutes 10 minutes and it's taking you like half an hour one hour to read one page it it is like a little bit yeah boring in the beginning but yeah we have to like you know train ourselves and get used to uh, that thing so yeah and, and and like language has four functions uh, reading writing speaking and listening which one did you find uh, uh, easy the, the easiest and which one did you find the most difficult among these four functions speaking and listening and writing and reading sir i think writing is the easiest writing is the easiest writing okay. is the easiest because mm-hmm. as i said before hangul is not that difficult especially mm-hmm. if you come from india and you know an indian script mm-hmm. uh if you know devnagari or any yes, other yes. indian language script also those scripts mm-hmm. are much more difficult hangul yes. is not that difficult so writing was not a problem mm-hmm. i think speaking is a problem because again it comes to vocabulary not having enough vocabulary mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. yes speaking definitely definitely it is uh, but, but i think particularly like uh, uh, i don't know like easy and difficult these are very subjective terms so maybe what is what you are saying as easy is difficult for others so it's a very subjective thing but like when as a teacher if i talk about it i found that most of our students in uh, the batches that i am teaching their speaking is pretty fine actually it's very it's very good Uh, compared to the students that i have taught in past the reason is that most of the, these students they are very much interested in like uh, korean music and drama and movies and they watch these things so uh, obviously they will compare their uh, speaking skills with those things so they will always find it difficult but as a teacher i feel like they are much better at speaking and listening than they are at reading and writing uh, yeah Uh, th- that has been my experience that's Because, a fantastic compliment i feel so nice hearing that i hope that includes me also in all this definitely students. definitely you you are yeah one of the best students i can say that there is no you know thank you sir that's so, that's yeah. wonderful yeah so okay uh, now <clears throat> Uh, about learning language uh, online you said that you have already like how did you learn spanish did you attend some institute or like, did you learn it uh, yourself through self study Yes, I attended institutes, okay. and uh, I also studied it in school for mm-hmm. some time. So that okay. helped. So how how was it different in case of Korean? Did you find uh, it difficult? Obviously, differences will be there uh, between like real uh, going to a real classroom and interacting with the teacher and your classmates while sitting in front of the computer. And obviously, so so how was your experience? what what do you do you think yeah is challenging when doing learning a language online uh so i think the most challenging thing with concentrating online is um being able to concentrate without having any external stimuli for example if you are in a classroom you know mm-hmm. the teacher is looking at you you know the students are looking at you yes. your body is physically forced to concentrate mm-hmm. 
but at home since you don't have that external stimuli you can switch mm-hmm. off your camera and just listen to the teacher speaking sometimes mm-hmm. my brain did tend to wander off sometimes yeah it happens yeah. totally happens yeah hmm that that is the challenge that i find like uh, uh, yeah as a teacher also as a teacher uh, also i can say but yeah uh, although it's a little bit different in in case of a teacher because like you everyone is looking at you and seeing you, whether you are looking at the students or not you have the attention of everyone so yeah you don't have that luxury that you can do anything but still uh, compared to a real classroom where you were present like and you were just moving around the class and everyone is uh, looking at you still you are sitting and uh, at home and you feel a little bit relaxed i think i feel myself much more i think active when i am teaching a real classroom because like you see the faces of the students you have the like you can move move around and you can go to the students you can ask them things you can look at their notebooks what they whether they are writing correctly or not so definitely these these things are definitely the limitations of online learning but still i think we are living in wonderful times that we can do these things at least because uh, yeah yes sir i was really i was really happy that i could do this uh, mm-hmm. course and i could do this with you because otherwise if we were not uh, doing this yeah, online it would not have been possible we live in two separate countries right now yes so mm. uh, yes that the resources become better because yes. now you can get any there more resources options. Mm. there are more options so mm. you can get them from anywhere in the world and it's especially mm. useful for people who don't live in metro cities exactly that's, in that's india people think this online system has come this year but the truth mm. is like i attend a lot of coachings and mm-hmm. language classes but the truth is there are so many small cities in india and so many people live there people have been attending online class for a very long time uh they have been attend because in their city where they in their district in mm-hmm. the entire district there was no resource available so they had mm-hmm. to look for it online so yes. i think it it is the future if people like it, it is the future like it it is yeah. the future it is the future and it can benefit so many people i really uh, you know wonder why not indian universities like for example iits they are limited in number the universities like delhi university jnu and all these like iims there are limited number of institutions best institution institutions in india and not everyone can go to like uh, join their courses but if they can put their resources online and if let's say they have like they can democratize the education a bit i think it can in the long term it can really benefit the country because even people from like villages and small cities and the people even who can't afford like uh you know coachings and all these things they can still uh, do the courses i think even in terms of language i don't know why the institutions like uh, jnu and du they haven't started a proper online uh, language course for in korean they should i think but yeah so yeah definitely this is this is going to be uh, the future okay so uh, in terms of uh, like uh, learning korean khud se jab aap seekhte hain korean language to aapko kya lagta hai ki कितना टाइम और एफर्ट की जरूरत होती है इसमें सीखने में बिकॉज ऑब्वियसली इट विल वेरी डिपेंडिंग ऑन पर्सन टू पर्सन बट इन योर ओपिनियन इन योर एक्सपीरियंस हाउ मच टाइम एंड एफर्ट डिड यू हैव टू पुट इन सो बिसाइड्स द क्लासेस यस बिसाइड द क्लासेस बिसाइड्स द क्लासेस आई पुट इन एटलीस्ट हाफ एन आवर एवरी डे बिकॉज अदरवाइज इट you just forget things yes when once the class is over the next class say will happen 7 days later next mm-hmm. week mm-hmm. if you don't revise in the middle at all you will forget of course what was happening in the last class and you mm-hmm. will be lost when the next class happens so yes i did put in half an hour at least every day mm and do you think that consistency is important like what if someone is not able to put in half an hour every day but they can put in like 4 hours on saturday and sunday will that make any difference or is it the same i think it depends from person to person but so for personally it will not work for me mm-hmm. because one sitting 4 hours one day 
mm-hmm. is putting in a lot of quantity it will not be quality because it's in today's day and age it's humanly impossible to concentrate for 4 hours yeah. on anything yeah your brain has a limit ki, uh, to process things ha ek ghante ki online class mein my mind keeps Haan. wandering idhar udhar so it's just not possible to concentrate 4 hours mm mm-hmm. लेकिन इट्स इम्पोर्टेंट टू पुट इन मोर क्वालिटी टाइम ओवर क्वांटिटी सो आधा घंटा इफ आई डू तो वो बहुत अच्छे से होती है मेरी पढ़ाई इंस्टेड ऑफ अगर मैं चार घंटे दू तो कंसिस्टेंसी डिवाइडेड ओवर सम डेज इज मोर इम्पोर्टेंट फॉर मी एक्टली बिकॉज इट ऑल्सो इन्वॉल्व रिविजन वेन यू लाइक पुट इन हाफ एन आवर एवरी डे अल्टीमेटली लाइक सम थिंग्स विल बी रिपीट गेटिंग रिपीटेड लाइक एवरी डे सो यू आर गोइंग थ्रू दो थिंग्स ओवर एंड ओवर अगेन so obviously like if you were studying 5 days a week that's like five repetitions in a week two days will be two repetitions so definitely long term uh, you know it will make a difference hmm. okay uh, w- one more thing about this uh, overall the course uh, we have talked to like uh, four or five students and we have like uh, heard lots of good things they are, they are always saying so because i i i am asking for specifically for negatives so if i ask you to criticize like put some like uh, some uh, critical negative points or things that can be improved just give me those things what for what things that you think uh, can be improved or should be improved um, like when we conduct this uh, level 1 again next time uh sir i'll actually have to think very hard there's actually nothing <laughs> nothing it it immensely benefited me i mm-hmm. know because we have a whatsapp group and we discuss i know it mm-hmm. immensely benefited all the other students as well mm-hmm. and um, it was very inclusive uh everybody has different uh, levels everybody has different speeds of learning so mm-hmm. the course was mindful of that mm-hmm. uh it was a very inclusive space everybody could make mistakes were allowed so yeah that does that is an important part of language learning was of mm-hmm. course we will make a lot of mistakes so that way i think the course was really good i actually don't have any any negatives in terms it. of material like uh, i like some students uh, told me that Uh, the material uh, should if the, like we could provide the reading material beforehand before the class that could benefit more instead of providing it after the class with the notes so uh, that i don't know obviously it will differ person to person some people may find it useful some people may not have time to just read it even if they get it beforehand so that will definitely uh, uh, be different for people um but uh, regarding that thing i want to know your opinion and also regarding the use of uh, more multimedia material so do you think like the amount of listening or other activities that we did was that enough or should do you think that we should have done more listening and maybe less uh, reading writing or grammar sir so i now that you say it i mm-hmm. think that can be one of the things Mm-hmm. because reading and writing is something when you learn a language these things are easier to pick up because you spend a lot more time on them in any course mm-hmm. but listening if you li- especially if you live in a country where nobody really speaks that language mm-hmm. listening speaking are skills that develop very late even when i learned other languages they exactly. really developed very late Mm-hmm. so i think yes so that can be especially in the online mode using mm-hmm. multimedia can if somebody's mind is wandering off like mine mm-hmm. is always wandering off yes. it will instantly come back to the class right and you will be forced to pay attention because listening is something that requires a mo- more attention than reading mm. what, what about the uh, because i was also, also thinking like yeah we should use more and more multimedia in the class uh, what about the material thing uh, that should be provide if we provide beforehand or like if we provide follow some book instead of like uh, uh, just uh, i i'm personally creating the customized what i do is actually i, I don't i haven't told this tell you this but i change modify the text and everything all the time so maybe i have prepared a text that i'm going to use uh, in the next week class 
but after doing this week's class maybe i will modify that seeing like how the students are where they are struggling or what they are doing well already so maybe i will include some more stuff or maybe i will remove some things so right now i i, I was doing this way but if you follow a book then things are fixed like that you have to follow the text you have to follow that this particular exercise and all these things what in your opinion like uh, i'm also like in a dilemma like should we use a book or uh, should we follow <laughs> the way we are doing right now what is your opinion as a learner so as a learner i would say obviously um having a book is useful yes. but but changing things being dynamic the text being dynamic the material being dynamic based on the needs of the students mm -hmm. is a lot more important but mm -hmm. then sir i would add that having a book is useful in some yeah. cases but yeah. again it codifies things a lot as in yes. aise hi chalna hai you mm. have to do this and you have then yes. you have to do this so wo counterproductive bhi ho sakta hai kabhi kabhi hmm. but but yeah i think we can have a base material like that this is the base that we will follow this will be the topic of discussion today this will be the the vocabulary this will be the grammar that will cover the other stuff can be dynamic it can be changed maybe maybe that is we can find a middle ground uh, uh, somewhere because that is one thing that i really hated when i was teaching in some uh, institutions or uh, some like i have done some like corporate training programs uh, longer ones like 3 months 4 months so they wanted everything in writing they ask us like we want every minute detail whatever not not daily they want like hourly so if it is going to be a 2 hour class what will we be covering in first 30 minutes then next 30 minute then so 30 actually it should be like every 15 minute you have to divide like this first statement oh. we will read so it was very very detailed like you have to make a like 10 page uh, curriculum but as a teacher i really hated that it really you know doesn't give you any flexibility so you have to finish the reading in 15 minutes but like it's a language learning sometimes we will the student will ask a different question about culture or something that will like extend to half an hour maybe so you have to be a little bit flexible it's not like some uh, mathematics or science class where everything is fixed so uh, now because i am in control so <laughs> i really didn't want to do that to fix myself in that curriculum and all the things but yes now i have realized that yeah a base uh, material a base curriculum uh, giving the students beforehand can be really helpful Like, okay it can also work uh, like if you have a base curriculum for level 1 mm -hmm. it can tell people what to expect in level yes that's also level one. a good point and say for mm -hmm. example somebody has already studied korean for a while if you have a base uh, level material for level 2 as well they can mm -hmm. assess whether they are good enough for this level 2 course or not uh, for right. example if you have some base material if you have some guiding principles for level 2 mm -hmm. people will be able to assess ki acha humne pehle padha hua hai lekin humne kitna padha hai hame nahi pata kya hum is level 2 ke liye theek hai ya nahi so that can help learners that that's 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 very true that's a good point okay now as a as a learner you have learned a uh, korean language up to some you have finished level 1 and you have studied it for like a few months including uh, the learning that you did yourself so 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 if someone is starting today to learn korean language anywhere whether they are learning uh, online or send some institute or university or through self study any particular things that you would uh, want to uh, suggest them or any tips that you would like that do this don't do this or you should go in this way <laughs> uh, okay i say this with the least possible experience <laughs> yeah whatever <laughs> experience is. you have obviously maybe your your own thoughts may change after 2 3 months yes but yeah at this point uh one thing i will tell people is that do not be intimidated by the script ye soch ke are ye to alag script hai alag hi cheez hai alag hi cheez hai ye kaise sikhenge ye kya dikh raha hai and especially mm -hmm. I, in india i have a feeling that when people look at east asian languages like yeah, chinese yeah. japanese or korean there is this sudden mental block ki ye kaisi script hai mm -hmm. uh and our popular they feel like it's like just like uh, chitrakala or something like it's <laughs> some hieroglyphic script from 
Hmm. Prehistoric exactly. times or something. <laughs> yeah. The thing is, I'll I'll tell people to not be scared of the script at all. Mm-hmm. Hangul mm-hmm. is not as difficult as it looks, mm-hmm. and you will be able to pick it up in no time. That mm-hmm. is the easy part of learning Korean. And I would tell people to really devote some time to learning vocabulary, mm-hmm. because that is something I devoted a lot of time to because I was struggling <laughs> okay. with it. So okay, yeah. Hmm. Okay. Okay. But like, uh, last question. What is your like uh, uh, future plan in terms of Korean language uh, field? Like, how do you plan to use it in in career? Like, do you even do you, do you plan or not? Yes, sir. I do plan to use it in my career. I will. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to learn Korean to a mm-hmm. level where I can at least be at least be able to read simple news reports. simple mm-hmm. translations uh to an extent be a little technical also later because my field is technical uh, it's for, related yes. to foreign policy yes. so i want to have the kind of fluency in korean where i can mm-hmm. read news reports interpret them in terms of foreign policy and uh, later when i graduate from college mm-hmm. i wish to work in uh, international relations of east asia so mm-hmm. whichever firm i join whichever think tank or firm i join it, mm-hmm. whether it's geopolitical risk or related mm-hmm. to foreign policy mm-hmm. it's very important if you are studying a particular region of the world or if you mm-hmm. are studying anything related to that world in a serious way in an academic or mm-hmm. in a way that furthers your career it's very important to know the language very very important yeah very important so i will have a uh, an edge over everybody else who wants to study east asia because i will already know the la- no one of the languages there totally because like i remember like in, in if you go to any classes in jnu when i was teaching there are in every batch there are one or two students Uh, who are not uh, from our department of korean language department they come from uh, the international relations department school of international studies and they are doing their phd's in maybe chinese studies or japanese studies or korean studies and they like they 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 they, they like they get a block at certain point that now they are not able to proceed because they need to look at the articles written by the natives the news articles the reports and the government uh, policy documents and all the things and even if they use google translate and all these things you still need to know some language to to just verify that if it, it is correct translation or not so it's not that even if you study for 2 years 3 years still it will be little difficult to you know to comprehend the policy documents correctly because they are very technical documents but if you know the language definitely uh, you can verify things in a much better way so I totally agree that you will have an edge if you know that. Sir, I'll language. tell you something. Only in mm-hmm. India, PhD mm-hmm. programs, say in mm-hmm. Korean studies, will mm-hmm. admit students who do not know Korean. Anywhere else in the world, especially in the top universities, mm-hmm. in PhD programs, you want to do a PhD in Korean studies or East mm-hmm. Asian studies or Chinese studies, yes. they mm-hmm. will not admit ah. you if you do not you know the language. Okay. Fluency in the language mm-hmm. to the extent that you can read research material. and books True. written there and it's very important yeah how can you like it's it's very especially the the the, the countries uh, who are not like uh, very good at english like who, like the minority of people who speak english like in terms of india if someone wants to study about india even if he doesn't know hindi maybe they can because there is a lot of material written in english actually yes. research material is available in english uh if you want to study like maybe some other countries maybe germany or something still it's possible but this east asia it's definitely you need to know the language japan china korea and so even in any country not just for korea or for india a lot of culture is codified in language exactly hmm. if you start learning language of any country and you start learning the nuances of that language hmm. you are going to totally learn so much about different perspective you will get like yeah a totally different perspective like you will totally see a different side of the country the people that you okay. cannot see like yeah through some other language that's very true thank you so much palak it was really great to talk to you and thank you for uh, sharing your experience and insights kham samnita kham samnita son singh name it's always nice talking to you as well yeah same here